Good morning, guys. Um, and number one, I just want to thank everyone for um, all your feedback concerning Monica's muscle cramps that I had the other day and uh, different remedies that you guys used, uh, such as magnesium supplements, potassium, bananas, uh, coconut water, pickle juice, um, magnesium oil, water, 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 and... Um, no cramps last night. I kept myself hydrated and tried all those remedies and uh, sea salt under my tongue because uh, I didn't want to go through that again. That was, man, that was rough. But um, I really think it's because I haven't been drinking enough and I, it's, I have to be mindful of that and stay hydrated. But thank you guys for, um, for all your feedback. It was helpful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I was going to do morning meditation this morning, but um, my laptop froze up on me, so I'm having to use my phone, and I can't do the, the background music in the phone at the same time, so it'll come eventually. So I decided to do a little bit of reading today. A friend of mine um, purchased this book for me, When God Was a Woman. I know everybody's like, oh Lord, there she goes again. But um, I want to read something to you. It's just the preface of the book. I'm just beginning to read it. Um, let me just read this for you. Okay. It says, how did it actually happen? How did men initially gain the control that now allows them to regulate the world in matters as vastly diverse as deciding which wars will be fought, when, to what time, dinner should be to what time dinner should be served this book is a result of my reactions to these and similar questions which many of us concerned about the status of women in our society have been asking ourselves and each other as if in answer to our queries yet another question presented itself what else might we expect in a society that for centuries has taught young children, both female and male, that the male deity created the universe and all that it and all that is in it, produced man in his own divine image, and then, as an afterthought, created woman to obediently help man in his endeavors. The image of Eve created for her husband, from her husband, the woman who was supposed to have brought about the downfall of humankind, has in many ways become the image of all women. How did this idea ever come into being? Few people who live in societies where Christianity, Judaism, Islam are followed remain unanswered of a tale of Eid heeding the word of the serpent in the Garden of Eden, eating the forbidden fruit and then tempting Adam to do the same. Generally, during the most impressionable years of childhood, we are taught that it was this act of eating the tasty fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that caused the loss of paradise, the expulsion of Adam and Eve, thus all humankind, from this first home of bliss and contentment. We are also made to understand that, as a result of this act, it was decreed by God that woman must submit to the dominance of man, who was at the time divinely presented with the right to rule over her, from that moment until now. The expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden is not exactly the latest news, but few contemporary happenings have affected women of today any more directly. In the struggle to achieve equal status for women in a society still permeated by the values and moralities of Judeo-Christian beliefs, which have penetrate it deeply into even the most secular aspects of our contemporary civilization. We soon realize 
that a thorough examination of this creation legend alongside its historical origins provide us with vital information. It allows us to comprehend the role that contemporary religions have played in the initial and continual oppression and subjugation of women and the results for this. In prehistoric and early history periods of human development, religions existed which people revered their supreme creator as female, the great goddess, the divine, ancestress, had been worshipped from the beginning of the Neolithic period of 7000 BC until the closing of the last goddess temples about 8500. Some authorities would extend goddess worship as far into the past as the Upper Paleolithic age of about 25,000 25, BC. Yet events of the Bible which are generally taught to think of us of as taking place in the beginning of time actually occurred in historic periods. Abraham, first prophet of the Hebrew Christian God Yahweh, more familiarly known as Jehovah, is believed by most Bible scholars to have lived no earlier than 1800 BC and possibly as late as 1550 BC. Most significant is the realization that for thousands of years both religions existed simultaneously among closely neighboring people. Archaeological, mythological, and historical evidence all reveal that the female religion, far from naturally fading away, was the victim of centuries of continual persecution and suppression by the advocates of the newer religions which held male deities as supreme. And from these new religions came the creation myth of Adam and Eve and the tale of the lost paradise. What had life been like for women who lived in society that venerated a wise and valiant female creator? Why had the members of the later male religions fought so aggressively to suppress that earlier worship, even the very memory of it? What did the legend of Adam and Eve really signify? And when and why was it written? The answers I discovered have formed the contents of this book. When God was a woman. The story of the suppression of women's rights has been written and explained, written to, it has been written to explain the historical events and political attitudes that led to the writing of the Judeo-Christian myth of the fall and loss of paradise, and most important, why the blame for that loss was attributed to the woman Eve, and has ever since been placed heavily upon all women. Hmm. This should be an interesting read. Because I've I've often thought that, you know, going back and looking at the at the, the trying to read the scriptures again. It vilifies women to be subservient, less than, keep your mouth shut. You're the cause of all, all of mankind that's in this trouble. It's the woman's fault. And I always had trouble with that always had trouble with that and I never knew again growing up in the Jehovah's Witness faith I never knew about um, the the goddess worship and all we were ever told was it's pagan stay away from that it's pagan practices blah 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 
But I never knew that before Abraham, there was goddess worship. They have these statues of different goddesses that predate Abraham. So there was established religion already. There was worship already before Abraham. Why is it that we were taught that that was the beginning? That's why I say, look again. That's why I say that you have to empty your cup of everything that we've all been taught. There's more to it than we've been told. And as more and more people awaken, the truth is being revealed. So I'm going to be reading this book and sharing, <laughs> sharing with you guys what I find about ancient goddess religion. What, what is all that about? So anyway, that's just another rabbit hole. And I don't think it's a rabbit hole. I think there's something to this. So I'll go ahead and close. Now I just wanted to let you guys know where Mom Miss Monica's mind is going next. And uh, it's a rainy day here in the Ozarks. So I'm just going to um, catch up on things that I need to do. I'm, I'm uh, going to be doing um, one of the f festivals where I sell my jams and jellies and chutneys and pickles and all that stuff. And um, I peeled, my goodness, not peeled, but I, I processed a whole case of bell peppers yesterday um, to get ready for Mama Monica's Jamaican meat pies. And um, today I'm going to be working on processing two, four, five pineapples and jalapeno peppers. And I'm going to make me a beautiful batch of cowboy candy, which is uh, candied jalapenos. And I'm going to try and make a new recipe. It's called Cowgirl Candy. And um, it's just uh, candied jalapenos along with candied chunks of pineapple for the cowgirl. But anyway, I'm going to get busy doing that. And um, you guys have a fabulous day. And again, keep your vibrations high. And as I always say, love and light, guys. Love each other. Support each other. Love and light, my babies. See you next time.